What's up guys, it's All Day Anthony and welcome back to a Honda vlog that you hopefully know and hopefully love because in today's video, we're checking out the new FL5 Civic Type R. Let's go. Alright guys, welcome back to another exciting Honda vlog where in today's video I'm going to be checking out the FL5 Civic Type R in person for the very first time. Now like many of you, I have seen all the videos, watched all the reviews, checked out all the photos, but I have yet to see one of these face to face. Now fortunately for me, my friend Steve over at Garage Slick just picked up an FL5 Type R in Championship White that he offered that I could come check out and film a first impressions video on. Now this is just going to be a walk around video coming from the perspective of a 90s Honda Civic owner, but in the future, I'll be able to take it for a drive and really give you guys my deep dive thoughts. But hopefully you guys still enjoy the video. This is kind of unplanned to be honest because we were planning on just doing the PPF on the RSX. Then he got the FL5 and was like, dude, come check this thing out. So I grabbed my camera and we're gonna go look at it for the first time. So with that said, we have places to be, people to see. Let's hop in the RSX and head that way. Alright, so our first stop is here at the gas station because I promised Steve that I'd pick him up some gummy candy in exchange to see the Type R and I felt like that was a pretty good deal. I'll take it. So I gotta pick that up and then from here we're heading to Jason's house because I have to pick up some Evo 9 headlights that he wants to drop off to Steve for PPF as well. So I'm gonna head inside, grab the goods, and we'll be on our way. Alright guys, so we just got to Garage Slick here and Steve said he had a special surprise for me. I don't know what that is exactly, but I'm kind of nervous, I'm not going to lie. Hands are shaking a little bit because I'm really excited to see this car. I want to see if I love it as much as I think I love it and I won't know until I see one in person. So uh, let's head inside. Alright, got his front showroom here and the main door. No way, not one, dude, two of them, oh my god, yeah, that is, that is quite the surprise, holy crap, dude, I don't know if I've seen a video with like two side by side yet, boost blue, championship white, holy crap, Steve, you're a lucky guy, man. You are a lucky guy. I can't believe it. Dude, these look these look freaking amazing in person. This is our second and third one we've had down here. We all already had a boost blue that's been out already. Holy smokes. Oh my gosh. That was two. That was two of some majestic theme that just played. It must have known. Oh, that was from the garage door. Okay, well, we'll, we'll roll with it. All right, so what's the deal with the two? Because this right here, Championship White, is yours. Yeah, that's our new shop project car. So it's it's going to be our demo car parked in front of the shop. So it's going to get a full body Expel Ultimate Fusion PPF, which is their newest PPF yeah. ceramic coating infused into it. Um, so you're doing everything? The whole car, all the painted surfaces, all the white, and then all the black will get the Expel um, Ultimate plus black, gloss black PPF, and we're also going to do the roof in yes. the gloss black. Yes, 100%. Plus, 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 we're adding full XR Plus ceramic window tint, windshield, and Exo Shield windshield film on the outside to keep us from getting cracks or chips in our windshield. And like I said, it's just going to sit in front of the shop and be our demo car this year. Don't um, don't tell me that it's just going to sit in front of the shop. Just and throw we'll drive it to lunch once in a while. Okay, go get some chicken wings and things like that. Maybe but we'll just put it on Turo or something. And let Tur people drive don't it. tell me that. <laughs> don't, jeez, don't tell me that, Steve. Uh, so what's the deal with the blue one here? You said you've already done another 
boost blue type R yeah, uh, with so, PPF. So we did a full body wrap in the Expel Ultimate Plus um, PPF and the Expel Ultimate Black Ultimate Plus Black PPF on another boost blue. That one's out of here. This is the next one up, and so it's getting the same treatment: ceramic window tint, full body PPF, black PPF on all the gloss, all the piano black parts, and ceramic coating over everything at the end. Give us a rundown. So you picked this up last Saturday? Last Saturday. I've had it for a week now. Um, when I put my deposit in August, I was seventh on the list. I had moved up to fourth by last week, and then just through some, I, I don't miracle. know what happened, some miracle, I bumped up, and, and by Saturday night, Frank texted me, um, come get it at 5.30. I was dozing off on the couch watching the football game, Yeah. and uh, I had to get my stuff together and get down there. About an hour and a half later, I owned it. Championship White was the one I wanted, so I really lucked out on that, Dude, too, because freaking they weren't scored. Yeah. yeah, they weren't letting you pick colors, though, so... Um, whatever so you get, whatever you get, you get, get. whatever they got yeah. is what you get when your number gets called. So it just fell to me miraculously. I wasn't even quite ready. I hadn't researched it. Um, but when it happened, I was like, I got to get it. So, so now it's out here a year, a full year earlier than I was expecting. Damn. But nothing wrong with that. Dude, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm a jealous guy right now. I am, but that's okay. I'm, I'm honest about the jealousy thing because this thing is it's just so much better in person and I, I'm, it's just a lot, it's honestly kind of a lot to take in because I've watched so many videos and watched so many reviews and uh, you know, I'm not a baller like the other YouTubers who, you know, got to go out and experience the full thing. I'm a Honda guy for sure, but this was something that I didn't know when and where I would see one in person. So right when Steve hit me up and told me that he got one, I was like, no way, especially from Frank over at Larry Miller. I was like, what, what are the likes of that, dude? All right, Steve had to go run out and help a customer really quick. But what I think I'm going to do from here is give you guys my free flowing thoughts on the FL5 Type R from the perspective of a 90s Honda owner. I'm not really used to being around new Hondas, so this is something that's obviously new for me, which is really cool. Uh, but yeah, I just want to go through, check out the cars, the interiors, the exteriors, some of the features. Um, again, I. I don't know a whole lot other than what most of you guys have seen through videos, but I want to give you just a good perspective of just a normal guy checking out this car and the things that I noticed first. And the fact that I have two colors here is freaking amazing. And we were just joking around because the guy that showed up, his name's Anthony as well, and he has a very clean STI that I did a full paint correction on and Steve did a full Expel wrap on it. And the joke is, is that uh, he wants to buy my Evo and I said, if you buy my Evo, then maybe I'd buy an FL5 Type R. And uh, I don't know, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I would say between the colors here, Obviously the championship white, I'm drawn the most to that, but I think I'm more of a red guy because of, you know, the logo, my red Civic and everything like that. So I think the red would go pretty hard, but I also really want to see the black as well. So I don't know, maybe, who knows, down the road, we'll see. But what we're going to start out with is an opening cinematic. So you guys get familiar with these things and then we're going to jump into my thoughts. <laughs> So we're gonna jump into this, starting with the championship white Honda Civic Type R. So first impressions, the rear of this car definitely is a lot fatter than what you would probably perceive here on video. In person, this is a pretty big car, and the rear end of this car looks pretty fat and pretty thick with two Cs. I think at this angle down here, 
This thing looks exceptionally aggressive, especially with the tailpipes there. Um, I love seeing the Type R badge with the giant uh, red Honda emblem there. And then the Civic badge right here isn't quite chrome, but it's more of like a shadowed chrome. So um, I think that the rear diffuser here looks amazing. Most people will typically add a rear diffuser on top of their rear diffuser on top of their rear diffuser, and I do not think that's the case with this car. I think that that looks absolutely perfect from factory. The only downside is that it's in gloss black. There's actually a lot of things that are in gloss black on this car that are gonna be pretty prone to scratching, and I think most of this stuff is gonna get pretty hammered in comparison to the FK8 Type R, which had the fake carbon, especially the top of the spoiler here. So all gloss black. I know that they have a carbon option which costs $2,000 plus, but it might be something that's worth it or it might just be worth getting this PPF almost immediately because even in this, straight from the Honda dealership that hadn't even been washed, still has some very fine scratches in it. Moving off to the side here, I think that again, the presence of having these wider fender flares just make it stand out more. There's a lot of generations of Civics that just had a really narrow body and there just wasn't really much you could do with them in terms of stancing them out or putting an aggressive fitment on them because with a narrow body and even wider set of wheels, it's still a narrow body. So the second you get a wider set of wheels or if these got spacers, it's gonna make this rear arch and front arch stand out so much more, which I think will look really, really good. But now moving down the side here, one thing that I'm gonna nitpick about that most people probably wouldn't even care about are these damn mirrors. For some reason, when I look at this car, those just stick out like a sore thumb. And I don't know what it is. It could be because they're door mounted. I really like when a mirror is pillar mounted or right kind of in this triangle area, but when it's door mounted, unless it's really sleek or subtle, it just kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, kind of like a Mickey Mouse ear or something like that. If it was color matched, maybe it would look a little bit different, but I'm really excited to see if there's other, like maybe future mirror alternatives from like Spoon or Mugen or something like that to where maybe they slim up the design just a little bit. But from here though, moving down, I would say that these functional vents definitely make this car so much freaking cooler. Um, the FK8 had the fake fence and whatnot, but the fact that these are functional is amazing, but probably is gonna create a pretty decent mess here on the lowers, uh, especially on the door here. So I can imagine why most people would probably wanna put PPF or something like that down there to protect it from that. Now, I'm gonna get to the wheels here in just a second, but one of the other things that stood out to me like a sore thumb on the FL5 Type R or just the newer generations of Civics is do you wanna guess it? Do you guys know what it is? It's the hood. The hood was something I just didn't understand in the design process. I know a lot of companies are moving towards rolling the hood kind of over into this fender line right here, and I don't know why. It just, it stands out way more and it shows off the panel gap way more and I don't know, it's gonna grow on me. I'm sure I'll probably get used to it with the more cars that do it, but I don't understand maybe why the reasoning for that was, other than maybe is it aerodynamics, is it just styling, is it accessibility? I don't know. From my perspective, this definitely resembles more of a 90s Honda than the FK8 did. The FK8 was just above and beyond like aggressiveness and you know sporty, youthful look, whereas this is kind of like a true, I don't know, next step up above a 90s Civic in terms of looks and styling in a good way, not a bad way. It's got that classic timeless look and I think this is gonna age extremely well. Now with that said, I do think that Honda will probably make some changes to this bumper over the next couple years. That seems to be Honda's main game plan is that every two years or so, they'll do something slightly different with the front bumper, whether it's a redesign or whether it's adding maybe a couple small accent pieces. Like for example, on the FK8, you had that giant section here of kind of fake vents. And then on the 2020 version, they added that little accent piece of plastic there that was color matched to the body that made it look a ton better. So so I don't know what they'll do with this. I can't imagine what kind of changes they would make because this is already like beautiful looking, but who knows, right? Because the 96 to 98 Civic was kind of a little bit chunkier looking, especially with the headlights. And then the 99 to 2000, they really refine that and sharpen the looks. So it could be something similar to that where they just sharpen it up a little bit. But I love seeing that intercooler there. I love that the bumper has this kind of integrated kind of front lip looking piece right here in the gloss black. Um, the headlights are amazing on this, very refined looking. And yeah, again, the big 
red Honda emblem with the Type R next to it. God, it's got a presence. It looks really, really good. Now, as far as the color goes, I think Championship White, obviously being a legacy color, just looks amazing on anything and everything Type R. It stands out, it looks really good, um, but it's kind of subtle in the same fact that it does stand out. I mean, when you see a Type R in the Championship White, you go immediately, that's a Type R, but as a color by itself, I don't know, it's got kind of a reserved look to it. It's not a very bright, bright white. It's not a cream white, but it's definitely got a little bit of a tinge of some warmth to it. But I think it kind of changes depending on the light and depending on what you put it under. But I really like the championship white. I think it flows well with all of the colors on this car. I mean, God, dude, I mean, in comparison to the, the 90s colors and whatnot, I mean, you had all the greens and you had all the kind of beiges and whatnot, and really in the 90s, the best colors that we had there was probably what, Milano red, Tafeta white, electric blue pearl, Phoenix yellow, Midori green, I don't know. There were some big hitters there in the 90s, but I think that everything that's coming out on the FL5 is definitely more of an eye-catching color and something that people are gonna feel is just generally more sporty. So, um, man. It looks really, really good. Again, I want to see this car in red. Uh, I think the red's going to flow really, really well. Black, I think, is going to look probably the meanest, but again, being the highest to maintain. So with that said, let's jump over to the Boost Blue color. I'll kind of give you my thoughts on this. So Boost Blue on the FK8 I thought was extremely badass. I thought it looked really good, it looked really sporty. I love the fact that it was more of a limited color in comparison to the others. But fast forward now to the 11th gen and the FL5, it's become more of a standardized color in Honda's lineup, which I think does make it a little bit less special. Now don't get me wrong, it still looks freaking amazing. It looks really, really good, but I wish they would have kept it more of something limited to the Type R. I think that would have been just a better option. But uh, in terms of the colors and whatnot, there's really no conflict. I mean, I think the Brembos look amazing with it. The black accents look awesome. Steve's right now in the process of doing the PPF on the hood. I think actually a lot of the PPF is done on all of the uppers on the car, but the color I think is gonna draw a lot of attention. So it's more of like a loud color on a more reserved Type R, which maybe gives a little bit more balance maybe in comparison to the FK8, I don't know. Some people can chime in and let me know what they think, but I still think it's amazing. I think the rear of Boost Blue has a freaking presence to it. So yeah, Boost Blue, it's not my top favorite, uh, but I would say that it's, you know, it's up there in terms of eye catchiness. So I really, really do dig the color. So this gives me a better look at the wheel and tire setup. 19 inch wheel by I think nine and a half, running at 265 is freaking crazy on a front wheel drive car from the factory. That's just wild, man. In comparison to the FK8 wheels, I think that these are, gosh, loads better. Um, in comparison to a 90s wheel, they are uh, loads better for sure. I think my Civic just came with straight up steelies and hubcaps. It did actually come with steelies and hubcaps. Uh, but the uh, Brembos here, those stick out like in a good way. I love the way that that looks. I think it flows well with the Honda emblem, which is actually kind of cool because this is a raised emblem here. I thought it would be a little bit more like sunken in, but that's actually raised, which looks good. And then black uh, lug nuts from the factory, which fits it really well. And then I love the fact that this is so easy to fill up. Rather than it being sunken in up here or by a spoke, it's right here actually on the barrel, which makes it easy to fill. So love that dude. I love the fact that it's got the plastic fender liners to make things easy to clean and restore. And then these tires right here, Pilot Sport 4S's freaking nice man all right so popping over to the engine bay here something i notice which i don't know if i'm crazy or if i'm missing something uh, but i was looking at the top of the hood here right and just kind of looking over everything and then i looked at the fenders on both sides and looked at the top of the bumper and then it kind of hit me that there is no visible vin tag and that's something that's really popular with all the 90s Hondas and something that's very important i mean really with any car in general is to have matching vins but on this Unless I'm missing something, unless it's like stamped somewhere super discreet, I am not seeing a VIN tag on here, which I thought was kind of interesting. And so anyways, the engine itself, I think looks amazing. I think that the red cover here makes it stand out and pop a lot more. Carbon accents here, carbon up top here. Um, what I like here is in this bay, there's a lot of room for activities and a lot of room for fun. So I can already imagine that this is gonna be easier to work on down inside here. 
left side of the engine. Once the air box is out, I think that'll be a little bit easier to work on. But I love the accessibility here, especially when the hood's popped up in its second Honda latch that it's famous for. And it's kind of crazy. It, it is crazy seeing, you know, a new nice Honda in person and looking at maybe how accessible everything is, looking at the pop clips and everything, because I'm just so used to seeing janky, broken stuff and or stuff that I have to replace on my stuff. I mean, I'm constantly replacing pop clips or plastic pieces, uh, going to the junkyard, making runs to find the most small, obscure little things, right? I can imagine that down the road in the future, I might be at a junkyard shopping for, I don't know, clips, maybe this metal piece right here that looks like it's riveted on. Maybe I'm hunting for uh, bump stops. Maybe I'm hunting for uh, windshield washer uh, fluid reservoir cap. I don't know. I just It's just funny because I just think of all the time I spend going to the junkyard finding stuff to make my stuff look nicer, but pop in the hood of a new car, it's just nice to see everything so clean, fresh, new, and untouched, which is just, again, kind of a cool feeling. So a couple other exterior thoughts before we move to the interior. The uh, shark fin antenna here. I'm kind of over them. I, I know that they're functional. I know they work better for aero. And I know some people like the look of them, but I'm just, I think I'm done with the shark fin look. I don't know, small nitpicky thing, but you know, I'm a 90s Honda guy complaining about new fancy stuff. Now, the tailpipes here. Some people are not a fan of the three pipe look. I like it. I don't, I don't mind it. Um, I would prefer a normal traditional, you know, JDM style look with having it off to the side and maybe having like a nice little kick up in the rear to make it look more aggressive. That's about it guys. I mean, exterior wise, I think it has much more of a presence in person. It's much bigger in person. It's much wider in person. Uh, I just think that on video and everything I've seen online, it's just kind of hard to capture the size of it. So hopefully this walk around will kind of give you a better idea on the width of this car and how it looks. I think that on the road, this will look a lot meaner and a lot more aggressive than just being here in a shop setting. Maybe I'll be able to do something like that down the road. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump in the interior really quick, kind of walk you through some of the more advanced features that, more, more advanced features than I've ever had the privilege of touching uh, in my cars. And so we'll see if I can figure this stuff out. All right, so opening it up. Ooh, that's nice. Nice feel on that handle. The nice clunk. It's not what I'm used to. And uh, checking out the interior door panel here. This, I think, I believe lights up here. You have uh, Alcantara or like a suede here with a red stitch, which feels really nice. You have all your buttons and switches for your mirrors, windows, locks. Um, but I mean, it's hard plastic, but I mean, I kind of like hard plastic things because they're less likely to scratch and they'll, you know, typically look good for longer. But I think that the main eye-catching thing here is gonna be these seats. Seeing these seats in person, I, uh, again, video and photo doesn't really justify them. Uh, you have to feel them. You have to grab this bolster, you have to grab it and kind of jiggle it and go, holy crap, these are stiff, these are really nice. This all feels amazing. This is, this is a suede-like material. Um, I, I would call it more of a micro suede. It's not like a true Alcantara, but it's definitely a micro suede. Uh, the perforation here is really nice. This kind of midsection, there's no hole down in there, but it's kind of cut like that, probably just to prevent extra wear. The little uh, plastic pieces for a harness, I guess if you wanted to run that or just keep it how it is. It does say Type R on there, subtly embossed in, but yeah, these seats, they're not cheap. Don't, don't think that they're cheap. If you look at the pictures or photos of this car and you think that looks cheap, they're not. When you just touch them and you feel them, this feels about as high quality as any seat that I've ever felt in a Euro car or anything really high end for that matter. The only trade off is that you have manual adjustment on everything. So there's no electronic adjustment down here. You have your traditional adjuster bar, but um, they're good looking, man. Gosh, they're good looking seats. I. I like these way more than the FK8. I like these way more than any 90s Honda had, uh, with the exception, because I'm still a big fan of all the old school Recaros, the EK9 Recaros, the DC5 Recaros, um, and I like the fact that Recaro 
was the seat of choice for those cars. I like that they put that brand of seat in there, but I don't know if Honda manufactured these or um, who manufactured them. And if Recaro did, there's really no way of knowing, but they look amazing. So moving on to the floor mats here. This is one thing where I was, I was kind of hit or miss about. Everybody saw the red carpet and they were like, damn, red carpet, it's back, it's amazing. Me being a crazy person, I saw red carpet and I thought, I really hope that that doesn't get dirty because <laughs> that's gonna be a huge pain to clean. The floor mats are one thing, right? I could, I could deal with the floor mats, I could keep them clean. If I went with a black floor mat, I could imagine that working. But the red carpet itself, you gotta be careful, right? You put your foot here, you put your foot off to the sides, that's all gonna have some serious wear with time. And I don't know with this red, how strong of a cleaner you could use before it starts maybe fading or pulling color out. So just something to keep in mind. It might make sense to do more of like a full bucket style floor mat in here to keep it looking nice but metal pedals here they're a cover for sure but I don't know how they're they're on there it would be cool to see a metal cover here on the dead pedal and then you have your hood latch right here so um, I don't know I think it looks it looks killer it looks amazing but the only thing is it's probably gonna get pretty dirty all right time to sit in this thing so I'm gonna step in here slide my butt over across the bolster bring my leg up and in Use my elbow here to raise myself up and wow, 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 wow. These seats, these seats guys, like they're it, man. These are the seats right now. For reference, you know, I'm 6'1", 230-ish pounds. You know, I got some kind of thick legs here. I got some thick thighs, but uh, I do fit in them. I do fit in them pretty well. But I will say if you're a big boy, you might have some issues with these seats. So steering wheel here. Leather, I like the leather. I also like the Alcantara. Um, Alcantara would be great for somebody who knows how to take care of it, but leather's gonna be great for you know normal everyday people. So, red badge here, but this is a good looking steering wheel. I would never change this out, this looks amazing. There's no, re no, no need to change it out. It's not like a 90s Honda where the best thing you can do is jump to an S2000 wheel, but this looks really good and really sporty. Got all your switches here. Everybody told me I need to touch these things. And I see why now. Those have this, how do I describe this? It's got a little bit of resistance to it, but it feels good. It, it's, not, it's not cheap. It feels really, really nice, but it still is like a plastic. And it's nice because when you get it to that middle section, it kind of clicks to reset itself in, in the centered position. And then down here, this is gonna be an important part. So I'm gonna get my feet on the pedals here so you guys can see everything, if it can focus. Gas, brake, clutch, oh. Nothing like a new clutch, guys. Nothing like it. That's very nice and very, very smooth. So, going over to here, the shifter. First impressions. Holy crap. That's stiff. That is like an upgraded shifter on any one of my cars. That's got a nice resistant side to side. No jiggle to it at all whatsoever. Right back into place. First. Oh, <laughs> Oh yeah, dude. Oh man, that is nice and notchy. You can kind of feel everything. I mean, it's not just like it just it just it's not just clunking into gear. You can kind of feel the friction going into that gear, whether it's the synchros or whatever it is. Fifth, there we go. There's fifth. I'd say I imagine it's got to be broken in a little bit, but once it's broken in, it'll be good to go. This car has, I believe, 30 miles on it. I don't know, we'll see. So, key right here in hand. Got the nice red badge on there. Set it right down on the seat. Push button start right here. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. So, different driver modes here, showing that my door is open. Um, AC, sync, I'm gonna, I don't know. I don't know what this is. This is too advanced for me. Um, okay, sync, I think it means what? That's both climate control, on and off, auto. Okay, I can, I can manage this, I can figure this out. You got your sync for, this is for your charging. Yeah, you have an on and off button. Uh, I don't know what that does right there, but there's a button there that does something. And all that, and then if I click right here, I can go to, if I click down, I will go to whatever sport mode that is, and it changes the screen. And then comfort, 
change the screen to a comfortable look and then back oh that's all of it up back up individual and then this right here the type R button oh yeah kind of a that 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 picture doesn't really do it justice there but man that looks so good and then we have our parking brake that's something that I'll never get used to I like I like just the good old ripper man give me just a, something to rip on this is kind of like oh parking brake I don't know it is it's not as manly I should say but love the way that that looks that looks just super race car looking I honestly guys I don't even know what um, so you got some buttons here oh my god it's too many looks like Steve just got back uh, glove box inside here Ooh, it's got a nice firmness to it Ooh, got the window sticker it's got to laminate that bad boy you have your civic badge there showing you which number you are and then one thing that I will say the clickiness everybody talked about the clickiness and they are correct this is clicky this is nice you could rotate these all day long, grab life by the knob, and just turn it, man. Just give it a couple turns in both directions. Just really get a good feel for it. You know, that feels feels really nice. So, midsection here, I don't know. Oh, that is a, something you can put things in. Nice, okay. I like that, I'm all about that. And then I do like that they did like a textured plastic here because uh, it's not textured, but it's got a design to it because a lot of you know companies will do a gloss black here and it'll just get wasted. This will hold up with time. This could withstand some abuse for sure, which I really like, so pretty badass. I like that. And then the red seat belts, amazing. I love red seat belts. So uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for up here, uh, mirror, Got some type of speaker thing, whatever that's all about. Lights, LEDs, nice. Um, I, I don't know. And then I think the black headliner. And now that the door's been opened, you can get a better look here at the lights. Those look, man, those look mean. I love the way that that looks. It's gonna look really good. So let's go ahead and jump into the back seat here, jump into the rear, and then Steve, he's got some PPFing to do. So open this up. And the seats in here, this is, I like that they did the red seat belts. I like that they did the red accents. I don't think that these needed to be red. That would be ridiculous because if you're putting kids in the car or passengers in the car, they would get super dirty. Um, backs here, this is just the hard plastic. This is all cloth still down here. So, but I love the fact that they put that there. So people in the pass, people in the, people in the rear there know what they're in when you're hitting those, uh, those lateral G's. But um, carpet here, the carpet material, how do I describe this? It's not the highest end carpet. It's not a very thick, uh, um, like a uh, tight pile. It's kind of a loose pile. So that's why I'm saying like, you gotta keep this clean. Otherwise it's just gonna get wasted. And then your floor mats here, cup holders in the middle, only seats two people in the rear. So four people total, but um, no, no illumination back here, but you do have the Alcantara on the sides and then I think that these feel ooh are those metal I think that is metal that's nice as well last but not least here pop the trunk the hatch I should say that pops up and then Steve got a freaking barbecue kit from Honda he was like dude I gotta open that up later I said I know let's get ourselves some chicken wings get some hot dogs Larry Miller is where he picked it up from he did not have the cargo mat back here, so maybe he'll do something about that. And then these seats do fold down. I'm not gonna do it, but they do fold down. So if you wanted to, you could sleep in this thing. I mean, if you don't buy a house and you spend all of your money and just buy Civic Type R, I think that you could live in here somewhat comfortably and you could probably be a happy person. And that would be a great story, right? You know, the guy that lives in a Civic Type R. Then under here, I think it's probably the spare and everything. I'm not gonna take it all apart. He literally just got this car. So light there for the license plate, rear camera. When we, uh, when we were in there, I was looking at the rear view camera. The rear view camera on here is still like a 2010 rear view camera. It's not like a 2023. It looks 
okay. It's kind of distorted looking. It's not the nicest thing, but you know, it's a, it's a Honda. It is what it is. So anyways, guys, that's going to be a walk around from here. I'm going to get a couple more shots of the RSX in here once Steve starts on the PPF just to set the vibes here because I don't know whenever I'm going to be next to two FL5s in person again, at least until Honda Day 2023 uh, in Boise. So Pretty exciting, I'm pumped, this has just been awesome. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, it's not as structured as something I would normally do. It was definitely more kind of just free flowing thoughts. Um, my final thought, I guess, on the FL5 is I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing to see in person. Is it something that I would sell the Evo for and pick this up? I don't know, I, I don't know. It's, that's, a, that's a hard question because I'm such a Honda guy. It's like, yes, I wanna do it but I don't know when I'd ever have an Evo that clean again. So what would be really nice if I had both, right? If I could have an Evo and a Type R, which would mean I would have to get rid of something else. Who knows, down the road. But for now, it's just nice to be around them and kind of be in the presence of them. And uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, enjoyed this kind of different style, please make sure to give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe down below for more Honda content. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Salt Anthony, peace. Hold on, hold on. Steve, did I hear that right? Couple weeks. Yep, in a couple weeks you can take it and uh, do your, your on road testing and, and first impressions. Oh my god, I'll be able to drive the FL5 Type R once it's fully protected, that is. Sweet guys, so cool, something I look forward to. I'll be able to drive the FL5 Type R and I'm really excited, so stay tuned.